Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece. I'm going to continue in this video uh, with our discussion on heart physiology with an emphasis on the extrinsic conduction system of the heart. In the previous video, we focused on the intrinsic conduction system of the heart. Anytime we use the term extrinsic in physiology, we're literally referring to some source outside of the organ or the system that we are studying. So when we refer to the extrinsic conduction system of the heart, it's going to have to be something that's coming into the, ho coming into the heart from its outside. And this is where we're going to now focus on the autonomic nervous system that is both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic branches of the autonomic nervous system. Recall that the heart is characterized by dual innervation, and by that we mean that the heart is an example of an organ that receives sympathetic motor neurons as well as parasympathetic motor neurons. Now, what controls the sympathetic and parasympathetic motor neurons that innervate the heart in different locations, as you can see in this diagram here, are centers inside of the heart, particularly in the medulla of the heart. So we have two cardiac centers, as we call them, in the medulla of the heart. Remember, the medulla sits just inferior to the pons in the brain stem. These two centers are given names that correspond to how they impact the heart. We have the cardioacceleratory center, so it has something to do with the acceleration of the heart rate. And then we have the cardioinhibitory center, which has something to do with slowing down the heart rate. The cardioacceleratory center is going to send fibers down into the spinal cord and then from the spinal cord sympathetic cardiac fibers are going to innervate the heart so we see those in the purple what is not illustrated on this diagram which is a little bit misleading is the fact that the sympathetic cardiac fibers actually arise from the thoracic spinal cord um, there aren't any sympathetic fibers that arise directly from the brain. All, all uh, so sympathetic fibers actually arise from the spinal cord. So what we really see happening is that from the medulla's cardioacceleratory center, um, these fibers descend into the spinal cord they synapse then with fibers that are sympathetic fibers that leave through these sympathetic cardiac nerves to innervate the heart and then increase cardiac activity. Parasympathetic fibers do leave directly from the brain via the vagus nerves. Remember we have a total of 12 pairs of cranial nerves and the vagus nerves are your tense nerves, very, very important nerves that we will talk so much about in Anatomy and Physiology Part 2. The vagus nerves carries parasympathetic fibers, not just to the heart, but to many different structures in the body. With the help of these parasympathetic fibers that innervate the heart via the vagus nerves, we see that the cardiac activity can decrease. As a matter of fact, that's, it is these parasympathetic fibers that actually keep our heart rate slow when we are at rest. And let me explain what we mean by that in the next figure. So you have learned now that the heart's contractions are due to the action potentials that are created by the pacemaker cells that then tell the contractile cells to create their own action potential, which then leads to contraction. So the pacemaker cells set the pace of depolarization. But in real life, we see that the autonomic nervous system actually controls our intrinsic conduction system. 
So the sympathetic and our parasympathetic fibers manipulate the pace at which depolarization occurs inside of the intrinsic conduction system. Okay, so let's say we were to sever the sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers from the heart. Let's say we remove the heart from the body, the heart, and provide it with the blood supply, oxygen, the whole bit. The heart would keep beating. After all, we have the pacemaker cells that are part of the intrinsic conduction system. But the pace at which the SA node depolarizes is going to be faster. So without input from the parasympathetic nervous system at rest, the SA node causes our heart to beat much faster, close to 100 beats per minute. The reason why our heart beats at rest around you know, a healthy heartbeat is about 70 to 75 times per minute, which would be a lot slower if you're, if you're rather active and athletic. Um, but on average, that's a, a healthy heartbeat. That heart rate is as a result of the SA node being influenced by the parasympathetic nervous system at rest. Okay, that is what we refer to as vagal tone. So when we're sitting in our chairs at rest, our heart expresses vagal tone. And what that means is that the vagus nerves are going to dictate at what, are going to literally slow down the SA node. Let's put it that way, okay? The intrinsic conduction system still does its job, but it's slowed down. So let's take a look at how that kind of works. Um, if we were to look at a, um, at the SA node and how it depolarizes it, how, how it depolarizes, we would see this pace. If on the other hand, we see the, in, uh, the, the, um, the effect of the parasympathetic nervous system, we see that the heart rate slows down. And this is due to the fact that when the parasympathetic fibers release acetylcholine. That acetylcholine actually acts inhibitory. So here we see an example of acetylcholine acting inhibitory. And we see more hyperpolarization occurring and a slower depolarization as a result. So the second graph illustrates the impact of the parasympathetic nervous system on our SA node. If, on the other hand, we get off our chairs to go do laundry, we need to run across the parking lot to make it to our, our class on time, now we're going to see that the sympathetic fibers kick in. They're going to release norepinephrine, and that is going to cause a reduced level of repolarization and a faster depolarization so that our sinus wave looks like this rather than this much slower sinus wave we see over here. Okay, so in, you know, in our bodies, we're never going to see that the intrinsic conduction system acts all on its own. It's always going to be affected by the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. At rest, the parasympathetic nervous system predominates and the sympathetic nervous system takes over when we start to become more active or we're stressed out, we're working out at the gym, etc., etc. Now, in the event the SA node fails to depolarize, remember the SA node is usually what sets the pace. That's where we see the starting of the depolarization occurring. Let's say that there's some damage to those cells then the AV node could take over, but it's going to cause depolarizations to occur much slower at about 50 times per minute. And of course, that's going to result in a heart rate of only about 50 beats per minute. If that AV node is damaged, has, is, is not having a good enough blood supply, whatever the reason might be, then perhaps the Purkinje fibers are going to set the pace and they're only going to set it at 30 times per minute. You can see now that when a person has a, their SA node pacemaker cells not operating properly anymore, 
why we need to provide that person with an artificial pacemaker so that the heart can continue to beat at a pace of about 70 to 75 times per minute such that it can push the blood around at a decent pace. So this wraps up our discussion of the extrinsic conduction system of the heart, which of course includes the autonomic nervous system and that they are controlled by the two cardiac centers that are located in the medulla, the cardio-inhibitory and the cardio-acceleratory centers.